Well, hello everyone and welcome to our uh, coffee break for Tuesday, April 14th. Uh, I just realized that there are like maybe four, three to four weeks left in the semester, which is amazing. And since uh, we've gotten back from spring break and have been all remote online, it's been uh, crazy how fast time has flown uh, for us. And it appears that summer will be here before we know it. So I uh, hope you're doing well. And uh, I'm excited to take a break for a moment today and talk a little bit about uh, cover letters. Uh, and I know that I say these are going to be shorter and shorter every time and they end up being just as long. So today's will actually be uh, a little bit shorter than they have been. So we're going to talk a little bit about cover letters. We talked about resumes in the coffee break uh, last week, uh, but this will just be a little bit of a general overview for you on writing a cover letter, what makes them different from a resume, uh, how to utilize them in a job application process. Do you need a cover letter for every application? Uh, and really what the goal of them are uh, and how to write them tailor-made for each job description uh, that you might be applying for. So we'll talk a little bit about that today and I'm just going to go through a quick reference guide that we have created. Uh, I have uploaded this quick reference guide again on the Department Moodle page and on the website so you can download the resource that I'm going to go through here uh, and read it on your own and, and utilize it on your own, but I want to go through it uh, over the coffee break today, just to kind of give you a little bit of extra information uh, and explain some of the things that are on the document itself. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get started. So uh, do you need a cover letter for every job position that you apply for? Generally, I say it's good to write one for uh, every time you apply for a position. Now, the formality of a cover letter may vary based on what type of company you're applying for, how they have you apply, what the process looks like. Um, but in general, even if you're just emailing your resume to a company that may not have a position open at the time, you're still gonna be writing some sort of email or letter to them uh, you know, when you reach out. Uh, and so maybe you're not writing a direct cover letter itself for some positions, uh, but you are writing a, you know, uh, uh, some sort of letter to introduce yourself and to inquire about potential opportunities. If you're applying for a company, you know, where they have an online application process, an online application portal, they're most likely going to ask you or have a place for you to upload a cover letter. They always ask you to upload a resume. There's, um, I, I've not been in a situation yet where I haven't seen a company ask for a resume. They don't always ask you or require you to upload a cover letter onto the online application uh, portals, but a lot of times they at least have the option for you to add one if you would like. And whenever something is not required, it's often easy for us to think, well, if it's not required, then maybe I don't need to do it, or maybe I can get out of not doing it, or maybe I don't need to put in the time or the effort. If they don't really want it, maybe I don't need to do it. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think it's helpful to think about this from a different perspective of, you know, what is making you stand out from all the other hundred applicants that that company has received for this very, for this position. And I think having a cover letter even when it's not required uh, to add in and to add value and to add context to your application is gonna be helpful. So I would, I would suggest writing a custom cover letter for every position that you apply for, even when the company doesn't necessarily require that you submit one. Uh, just because it's an added piece to your application that makes, the, that, that makes the case for you, and it really is the place where you get to tie the you know the work you've done in the past to the work you hope to do for the company in the future and that you really get to describe the value that you're bringing to the company or the organization and so i would always uh try to write a cover letter for each position that i'm applying for uh you know even if you don't find uh, a place to submit it or a place to utilize it it at least helps you think through some of the arguments you want to make for yourself and why you should be uh, the person in that position. Sometimes just writing a cover letter helps you with the interview because it's the place where you actually get to think through how your past experience, uh, you know, specifically relates using examples to uh, the internship or the job that you may be applying for. So always write a cover letter for a position and submit it uh, if you can in whatever way the company or the organization asks for. 
I've already touched on this a little bit, but what is the difference between a cover letter and a resume? You know, they're not just regurgitations of the same things. Um, you know, the resume is a brief, concise, uh, uh, you know, uses minimal language. It's, it's, it tries to be as brief as possible, but it describes your history of work experience and what you have developed or, or the results you've received from it. So the resume goes through detailed bullet points of experiences where you talk about what you did and why it mattered. So, you know, you may say I did X, which produced this, or I did Y, which gave me this skill set. The resume talks merely about what have you done in the past? What is that experience that makes up, you know, your professional portfolio today? So it's mainly, you can think of a resume as kind of a historical document. You know, it, it's, it's a historical inventory of all of your results and skills and abilities that have been gained through specific experience from the past. And the cover letter is a little bit different. The cover letter uh, is not, you know, it, it's definitely concise, but you're able to expand more on the experience that you've received um, while providing detailed examples on the cover letter, but it is the connector. You can think of, if, if you're looking at your application or the person that's interviewing you or the company you're applying to here, and you think of your resume here, all the past historical information uh, that you've gained in the past, you can think of the cover letter as kind of the middle ground, the connecting piece to your past experience and the job description. And it should try to blend those two things together. It should try to link the experience that you've had and that you've developed in the past to what the job description is looking for. It shouldn't just merely regurgitate your experience from the resume. It's going to include experience from the resume, but the thing you can't forget in the cover letter is linking it to the job description. So as you're writing your cover letter, you need to be thinking in terms of, I did this, which will help me do this. That, you know, you want to say it more eloquently, you know, in you know, better prose and the actual writing of the letter. Um, but that is mainly what you are doing uh, when you're writing a cover letter. I did this in the past and achieved and achieve these results. Therefore, I can do this based on what you've asked for in the position description. So let's go through just some basic um, tips about the cover letter. Obviously, you know, it should be written uh, as a professional letter. Uh, and saved as a PDF and only one page again. Um, you know, I mentioned that the resume should be one page, but there are some, ex there are some examples where you might want to, you might be able to go over one page as long as the content is valuable. I would not do that with the cover letter. I would keep it, and this goes for the majority of your career, the cover letter needs to be a concise argument for yourself and you need to be able to fit it on a page. Um, but obviously professional uh, letter writing style, you know, include your information, their information, address it properly um, and make sure it follows just a general letter format. You know, you want to address someone, obviously, when you're writing a letter, and it's difficult, especially if you're applying for a company where you may not necessarily know uh, who the person is that may be reading it. You may know the hiring manager, you may know the manager that you're sending this letter to, but sometimes when you're going to apply for an organization, you have no clue who's going to, who's going to read it. And so addressing a letter to something, to someone like hiring manager, a search committee, or, um, you know, to, to whom it may concern, like those general, um, uh, those general openings to the letter would be a good uh, suggestion for addressing it if you're unsure of who you might be sending it to. Generally, you know, you'll know the department of the company that you're applying to, usually human resources or uh, the recruiting office, uh, you'll be able to know that. And so I would address, you know, you know, in the, in the receiver's information, I would put, you know, the company name, human resources or recruiting department there. Um, but when you're addressing the actual letter, you may need to be general at times. Uh, obviously follow a letter style, but this means you need to have a thesis statement at the beginning with a body of the letter that kind of makes your main arguments for yourself using past examples and the job descriptions request for what they want you to do in that position um, and then closing it off. Uh, so letter written style uh, is, you know, important for the cover letter and make sure that you proofread it 
uh, it's difficult. Sometimes it's, it's, it's more easy to make grammatical errors on a cover letter because you're writing a paragraph form uh, than it is to, on the resume, even though both are possible. You know, the resume, you're writing one sentence lines and you can read that line really quickly. But in, once you get lost into a paragraph, it gets a little bit more easy to, to make mistakes and to not catch them. You know, don't forget to include your contact information uh, that agrees with, with what's on your resume. Some people will put different addresses and different email addresses on their cover letter and resume and it just doesn't make sense. So make sure that the address, you know, if you're using your home address on your resume, use it on your cover letter. Don't put your Wittenberg address. Um, make sure you have your the same email address. You know, I actually just like to make the header portion of both the cover letter and the resume the same, uh, just so, I, so, so it all looks, you know, kind of, consistent across the board, um, but make sure that you have your contact information in there. Cover letter is always single spaced, um, even though you may want to leave some space between the, the different sections, uh, but never double space your cover letter. Uh, it's easy on, you know, when, when, when you're in an academic mindset to want to double space it. Um, one, it takes up too much room and doesn't allow you to add in the content you need to without making the letter too long. Uh, and two, it just doesn't look professional when you're writing a letter and it's double spaced. Uh, I would make it single spaced for the cover letter purposes. Obviously, you want to proofread it. Just make sure it's uh, free of spelling and grammar errors. You know, don't rely on spell check again. I've had so many instances where people have written words, you know, in their cover letter and they're spelled right. It's just not the right word choice for that sentence. And spell check doesn't catch it. But it definitely sounds off if you read it out loud. So check over it a couple times. Set your resume or set your cover letter aside for a little bit. Come back to it uh, and check it again later. Or even better, have someone else take a look at it uh, and read it with uh, a new set of eyes. It's easy when you're writing uh, sometimes to uh, make run-on sentences that seem to never end, and you want to try to avoid this in the cover letter. Again, you can expand more on your experience here, but you don't want to go on and on and on uh, and, and, and confuse the reader uh, as you're going. It still needs to be a little concise uh, and you want to keep it short. And so I would just make sure you're not utilizing run on sentences that seem to never reach a point or never, you know, never get to an ending. Try to break it up a little bit more than that. And don't use language that anyone outside of Wittenberg or the workplace that you might have interned at in the past would understand. You know, if you're in an accounting firm and you're applying for, you know, a different company that's not public accounting next, you know, for the summer. They may not know all the accounting lingo that Ernst & Young or, or uh, KPMG used. Uh, they're not going to know the internal department names of the acronyms. They're not going to know the Wittenberg acronyms of, you know, the Wittenberg soup of names that we have. And so try to make it easy to understand by not including, you know, company-specific terms that no one outside of the company would understand uh, or acronyms that may be confusing. And again, when giving results, just like on the resume, list digits for numbers rather than spelling them out. Uh, that'll be so helpful for you in understanding, uh, you know, and, and, and pointing out your success and showing off your success and the results that you've had if you actually write in numbers. Again, it's different than what you've been told to do for writing papers, uh, and that's fine. You, you'll, you want to make sure you follow, you know, the correct format for, for your academic papers, but for a resume and cover letter, you want to make sure you're writing in numbers um, uh, just so it stands out on the page. Um, you know, there's not necessarily, you know, the focus on uh, past tense uh, for the cover letter uh, as there is on the resume, but you want to make sure that you're consistently using verb tenses. You know, you don't want to be talking about an example and switch from past to present um, to future, you know, within while you're, while you're still talking about the same previous experience. Um, so make sure you watch um, past tense or your verb tenses to make sure they agree with each other. And also you need to watch using excessive punctuation like exclamation points. Um, I've seen people end every sentence with an exclamation point and it just reads weird and it sounds strange. Um, make sure you're emphasizing what you want to emphasize or emphasizing results, but watch not to use exclamation points or um, you know, some people write their cover letters by including like four questions questions in a row in the paragraph and it just kind of seems weird. It doesn't provide much value. Um, and so you just want to make sure you're using those uh, consistently, but also uh, 
sparsely throughout the letter so that you're actually able to, to, to get your point across without, uh, um, without someone just being a little confused uh, along the way. Your opening statement of the cover letter um, will mainly tell who you are, what you bring, what skills or experience or results do you bring from past experience, what value do you think you're going to bring to the position that you're applying for. Um, and then it's going to name the position that you're applying for. If you're just looking for an internship, you can speak in generalities there about what you're, what, what you're applying for, but most of the time you're gonna write a cover letter for every position that you're applying for. It's gonna be custom for every position. Uh, and it should say, uh, you should name that position in the first paragraph. Uh, this is also where you should, um, you know, give your thesis statement. That, that really is kind of your thesis statement. Um, but we'll talk a little bit in the example uh, about how that works itself out. The middle should go into details on the skills that you've listed while giving results, uh, metrics, and examples. You should link those skills, those results that you've had in those examples with specific things you found on the job description that you're applying for. Because again, you want to remember to show how your past experience fits with the job or the position you're applying for in the future. You want to use keywords that show up regularly in the job description uh, to tailor the content of, of your cover letter. So again, like I said for the resume, print out that job description and highlight what keywords come up over and over again. Because if they're coming up over and over again, there's a good chance that that's something that they're going to be looking for and that will stand out to them when they're reading your, when they're reading your cover letter. And, and, you know, I say this all the time, and it probably sounds like a broken record at this point, but the focus of your cover letter should be on the value that you bring to the company and um, not only on what they can do for you. I mean, obviously you're gonna gain a lot of experience out of internships and first career positions and companies, and you're gonna learn a lot from these places, but in the hiring process, they're looking for what do you think you bring to them and why you would succeed in that role and what value you're going to offer them. So it would do, be a disservice to you for you to spend you know, half or more of your cover letter describing what you hope to gain from the experience. You should rather be focusing on what you hope to add into the experience that they're providing, what you hope to add to their work, what you hope to add to uh, their company or their organization. And then at the end, it's important to close well. Wrapping things up is one thing, you know, for the letter, but it's important to close well while also providing, you know, uh, a gesture of thanks or gratitude for uh, their time and reading and considering your application and also a, a desire to interview for the position. Uh, I'd be grateful to have the opportunity to interview for this position. Uh, and you also want to mention maybe even uh, the willingness or the openness to answer further questions about your application. Uh, and we'll see that uh, in the example that we'll look at. So those are just some basic things about the cover letter. I'm gonna give you a quick example um, from the business department that we use um, that I think is helpful. It's a simple example, so it's not a lot of, uh, it doesn't have a lot of formatting, but it's a simple letter that I think is really helpful um, for you uh, in, in trying to put this letter together. Obviously, we have a spot at the top for your name and information. Um, so you, you know, again, I would make this the same information as, as, as this is on the, the resume. Day, and then you have the company and the organization. Obviously, we have human resources department listed here, but you're going to have to change this around. It may be a person who you're working with. It may be a different department name, um, but you always want to put in the information of the person that you're addressing. Letter format. Uh, search committee is who we're addressing here. And then we jump right into that first paragraph where we talk a little bit about who, who this person is, they bring, what they bring, the value that they're bringing. They bring a wealth of experience in higher education at all levels. Um, and they're setting up their letter to go into the body where they explain why. So they're saying that I feel that I'm the best qualified candidate for this position based on the following reasons. And then the body here for the example that we use in the department is listed in bullet points. Uh, that's not always gonna be the case. You may just wanna do this as paragraphs in general. Um, and for different for different lines of work outside of business, bullets may not be, you know, if you're applying for a graduate school application, uh, this bullet formatted uh, section may not be uh, relevant or helpful for you. But in business, we like to do this because it allows you to quickly pull out of your letter 
uh, the themes that you're applying. So obviously this person is focusing on their program planning and administration experience, their sales and customer service experience, and their communication skills. Um, and they're describing those skills using examples uh, and applying them to the position in the paragraphs. Um, but it allows the recruiter to quickly scan through and see what is it that this person is trying to pull out of their experience and what are the arguments they're making for themselves for, for the role. Again, a recruiter may only look at these documents a couple of seconds before moving on if they don't find something that sparks their interest or that, that may uh, fit for the position that you're applying for. And so having this type of uh, uh, bulleted paragraph list here allows that experience to pop a little bit more uh, so that the recruiters can see them right off the bat and take what's useful to them. You know, that's why we use this format in the business department uh, and for people applying for business internships, even though it's not, um, you know, it's not going to be universally applicable everywhere. So remember that you may just want to write in true paragraph form. It doesn't really change the content of each of these sections, uh, but it just changes how they're laid out on the resume or on the, on the cover letter itself. Um, but again, this is the body. It's explaining experience, applying it to, you know, the position that they are applying for, and it's giving detailed examples. Um, for the person's uh, for the person's experience, and then at the end here we have you know it would be an honor to be granted an interview for this position. I look forward to hearing you from you, and I'm available for any questions that you might have. Thank you for considering my application. Again, expresses interest uh, in interviewing for the position or answering more questions, and it gives them a sign of appreciation for their time in examining or in considering your application, and then sincerely. Uh, I would always sign, hand sign the letter, uh, you know, if you can. Uh, one way that I would recommend doing this is actually just taking a blank sheet of paper and using a like Sharpie and signing your name on, uh, in Sharpie on that big sheet of paper, scanning it into your computer as an image, and then you can just use that image uh, as a signature. Um, so you don't have to print off the, each letter, sign it, scan it back in, all of that type of thing. It's more clean if you just sign on a big sheet of paper, scan it in, and convert that into an image. Uh, so you can use your signature and just paste the picture in on whatever document that you're using. Um, this doesn't include this, but I would also add a typed uh, version of your name here too, just because they may not be able to read the handwritten signature depending on how good your signatures are. Um, some of us have pretty uh, uh, wild signatures when we're trying to write them, so uh, they may not always be legible. So you may just want to include a written portion here at the bottom of uh, what that might look like for you or what your name is uh, so, that they, so that they can read it. This is just a general overview of um, of cover letters in general, and I, hopefully it's helpful for you. Again, I'm willing to review any cover letters you might be writing uh, and using to apply for, for different positions as you're going about um, uh, the next, you know, your next semesters here at Wittenberg. So uh, take a look at that quick reference guide online. Feel free to try out your hand at making your first cover letter and send it over to me, even if it's just for a, a position you don't actually plan to apply for. If you just want to get some experience writing one, uh, feel free to do that and I will take a look at it. Again, I think cover letters are important because they're the, they're really the way where you're able to start building that narrative about yourself and what value you bring to a company and apply it directly to, um, to the position. The resume doesn't necessarily uh, link your experience with the position description. Uh, that's where the cover letter comes in. Uh, and so it's important to, if you can, always try to write a cover letter in some format uh, that can be used uh, to, uh, that can be used for, you know, all the job applications you might apply for. And remember that sometimes if you're just sending your resume, a cover letter may be as simple as writing a letter similar to that uh, in the body of an email. Uh, especially if you're not applying for a position that may be open, you're just inquiring about potential opportunities. Sometimes the cover letter is a little bit more simple and put right into the body of an email and, uh, and, and sent to the company of the organization. They show up in many different forms, but I think they're important uh, nonetheless. Well, 
I am keeping my word and that this is much shorter than some of the others have been. We're at 25 minutes now and I'm going to end it right there. So I hope you are doing well. Uh, take care and I will see you back here on Thursday the 16th uh, for another uh, session of our coffee break and uh, be safe, be healthy and uh, take care. Thank you.